Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Song Theory. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, I have a Patreon. If you'd like to donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, it's up to you. I would appreciate it and it would help the channel. Anyway, today we're talking about Justin Bieber. We're talking about his failed attempt at getting a number one uh, Billboard top whatever song. Listen, Justin Bieber has, I don't want to say the word irrelevant, but he's been off the scene for quite a while. And what bugs me the most is the fact, you know, not only did he go on Instagram and start posted, uh, he started posting um, pictures of babies with the hashtag yummy next to it. You know, besides the fact that that was extremely problematic, okay, I also got kind of annoyed at the fact that every time he posts about something, he would always promote his own song. And there's nothing wrong with that except the part where he started telling people to, like, listen to the song on another computer and, like, log out and do it again and he was telling people to listen to the song over and over again so that he can reach number one and of course he ended up failing he never reached number one because a song called the box reached number one and the reason why i think this is important is because 2020 i think is going to define what music is for the next decade um I don't think it'll be 2021 or 2022. I think this year in particular, 2021, is going to define how music is going to be seen for the next decade. I think Justin Bieber doing what he did, working as hard as he could to get those listens and to get that clout that he was looking so desperately for, after coming off the heels of a few months of no music, of no publicity, and shortly after, he came out with an article or, or came out to some publication about how he's had Lyme disease for the last few months, which quote-unquote explains his absence. I think he tried to play the sympathy card and it just didn't work. People were too interested in this song called The Box, which I think is fantastic. I do like the song. Um, I was thinking about reacting to it on this channel, but you know, at this point, if you haven't heard The Box, go look it up. 37 million views at this point. Roddy Rich did it. He reached number one, Billboard, top 100. Currently, as this video is airing. I'm talking about this because I want you all to understand out there that music, the landscape is changing. The box beat Yummy strictly because hip hop is on top right now. Hip hop is destroying the game. Uh, its popularity has skyrocketed. Its relevancy has gone through the roof with artists like Drake, The Baby, Lil Baby, Roddy Rich, Future. All these artists have worked very tirelessly to make sure hip hop stays where it is and that it continues to be the genre of 2020. I believe the genre of 2010s was pop. Okay, I believe the genre of the 2020s will be hip hop. And I think that this song, The Box, is going to be a great reason as to why all of this is going to happen. People are listening to hip hop in a way they've never listened to it before in any previous decade. The, at the end of 2010s, we began to realize what was happening to hip hop. Okay, it was turning into this alternative, melodic, a beautifully written, sometimes crass, sometimes very engaging music. Some of which is unlike hip, uh, anything else, unlike rock, unlike pop, unlike any of these other genres. Country. You know, it's not like the 90s or the early 2000s or even the 2010s where it's like this one phrase you can describe hip hop. In the 90s, you can describe it gangster, right? Uh, in the early 2000s, you can describe it as bling, right? The bling era. In the 2010s, you can describe it as the lean era or the era of uh, mumble rap, I've heard. But I think the 2020s is going to prove something very different. I think hip-hop is going to turn left, or sharp left, into more melodic, uh, more dramatic, more emotional and I think gone are the days where we look at hip-hop as some beacon of light that will shine itself upon those who don't understand the streets or don't understand uh, the life of a gangster or anything like that I think hip-hop will turn into 
a window into the black experience. And I think this is going to be an interesting thing to, to understand. Justin Bieber represented the white experience, which I think people, not in a racist way or anything like that, but I think people are becoming disinterested in. They're becoming disinterested in all of that because they've seen it so much of it, right? It through the media, through movies, through television. People have seen all the facets of white culture and, you know, the white experience. And I think now, especially with, with songs like The Box, the way he hits with the melody, the way that he's able to come in with the different lines. And with that being said, I think now is the time where people are not so interested in just gangster rap or melodic rap or mumble rap, but they're interested in the black experience that is wrapped up in the package of hip-hop. And I know you're probably sitting there thinking, well, haven't we always felt like that? I mean, isn't that why hip-hop is so popular? Not necessarily. I think hip-hop was popular, especially in 2010s, mostly because of the, um, I think because of the marketing. I think it was popular because of the party scenes and people love hearing songs where you just stop thinking and you think more about lean and Zans and all that. But remember what happened late 2010s. Remember what happened in that decade. All these artists start dying because of drugs, because of abuse of lean and Xanax and perks. Think about what that means for the 2010s. The subject will start shying away from drug use and all the gangster this and shoot it up that and Drink lean here and do Zans there. What we're going to start listening to more of in the 2020s is the experience, the feeling, the emotion. Remember, late 2010s, more black men started going to therapy. It started to become an actual ad campaign for black men to get therapy. So now imagine what the 2020s will sound like. Black men, black artists who have now had their feelings flushed out, who have now had these bad experiences understood and talked about and put onto the table. They're starting to work through their emotions a lot better and becoming more filtered and more refined human beings because of it. I believe the 2020s will prove to be the greatest decade of hip hop because of how the black experience and black men and women are starting to evolve. So of course I feel bad for Justin Bieber. He tried his very best to pull it to number one, his song, Yummy, but unfortunately, Right now, the main star, I believe, in the 2020s will be hip-hop and the black experience. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. Am I tripping? Is hip-hop going to just be what it has been? Just the party and Zans here and drugs there? More artists are going to start dying and, and we're just going to repeat the same cycle? Or do you guys think the 2020s will be different? And that because of our evolution as black men and as black artists and black women and black uh, uh, leadership, do you think that somehow that's going to change how hip-hop will be viewed in the 2020s? Tell me what you think below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I, uh, I heard what you guys said. You wanted more concise uh, content that was more about the music and all that. I'm giving that to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day to better tomorrow. God bless. I'll see you all later.